Hey guys, and welcome back. Well, as a digital artist, you probably know how important gear is, right? Now, I've been doing a video since about 2013, and all that time, and even before that, I've been doing all my work on BenQ monitors, right? Now, I ran into the team of uh, BenQ at the uh, Animago a couple of months ago, and I talked to those guys about, you know, my expectations, what a monitor should be able to do, uh, based on my workflow. Now I do photography, I do film, I do 3D, and you know, what is the perfect monitor for me? And also one that fits my budget, okay? Well, uh, BenQ uh, took up the challenge and they send over this guy right here. This is the uh, uh, PD3200U, and we're gonna go through all the specs to um, you know talk about what it can do and how that fits my workflow, right? Now keep in mind, this is not a twenty, thirty thousand dollar monitor that you would see, you know, in the uh, high grade big studios. But I'm talking workflow for a freelance artist, right? I can't afford to spend twenty, thirty thousand dollars on a monitor, but I want the best possible for a reasonable amount. Okay, so we're gonna jump into all the specs and such, but I'm also gonna address specifically, you know, why it's my choice for uh, 3D modeling and animation, and how it also fits my needs for photography and film. Okay, so let's jump in. Here we go. Okay guys, well I already mentioned that a monitor is uh, pretty important for a graphic artist, uh, whether you are in uh, you know, 3D or otherwise, and uh, you know, I wanna talk about the workflow. Before I do that, uh, let's go into some technical details as you would typically get in a review video, right? Okay, so the PD3200U, it's a 32 inch uh, screen in the sense that the uh, diagonal diameter is 32 inch or 81.28 centimeters. It's an uh, LCD IPS panel, 4K monitor, uh, the resolution at 3840 by 2160, which is a very convenient in the 3D workflow and I'll show you that later. 10-bit uh, uh, color depth and 100% sRGB, okay? Now, as far as sRGB is concerned, um, there are multiple uh, color profiles supported by this monitor, one of them being sRGB, and uh, there's a whole debate in the industry whether you should use sRGB or Adobe RGB uh, or another one. Um, I typically use sRGB and Adobe, um, usually Adobe when I'm working for something that's gonna be printed, maybe photography or for magazines, and uh, sRGB if it's gonna be online, okay? Now, uh, it's pretty important to have accurate uh, color um, for obvious reasons, especially when you're working for customers because you don't want to have something look great on your screen and turn up at their location and look horrible. Now, that to an extent can be uh, caused by their screen if it's not calibrated, but you just wanna make sure it's good at your end, okay? All right, so 60 hertz uh, monitor, uh, the aspect ratio is 16 to nine, and it supports video in uh, 1080p and 2160p, all right? So let's look at some uh, connectivity here. Now, if we look at the uh, side, uh, there is a, a card reader and it supports SD, SDHC, SDXC, and MMC, which is uh, pretty convenient because you can put that straight in there, especially when you're very active in photography, that will save you a lot of time, okay? Um, two USB 3.0 ports and it has a headphone jack 3.5 millimeters, okay? So um, if we look at other connectivity for um, connecting to your system, two HDMI uh, ports, uh, one display port and one mini display port. Now in my case, I'm using three screens on my system. So uh, that mini display port comes in handy and it all kind of depends on what kind of a graphics card you have or graphics cards you have, okay? So, uh, what about the setup of the monitor itself? Well, you can um, flip this vertically if you like, in 90 degrees. Um, you kind of see that, you know, people, for example, using Adobe Illustrator would maybe do that. And you see that on business fairs and so forth. It's a fairly flat screen. You can uh, raise it up um, very easily. It's just a one button. You uh, push that in and with one hand, basically you can uh, raise that up and it kind of works on a spring. 
So when you push in that button, you release the spring tension and the monitor will basically go up by itself. If you want it down again, you push in the button and you basically push down the screen, okay? And you can tilt the screen as well, which is uh, pretty convenient. At least uh, I like to do that on occasion, right? So what else? Um, the monitor is factory uh, certified and calibrated. You will receive a calibration report with the, uh, with the monitor. So you know that all things are set up correctly. Obviously, uh, from time to time, you're probably gonna want to calibrate your, uh, your color setup uh, yourself, but you know that you know, out of the box, it's ready to go, okay? So um, this uh, part is really important to me. Um, it has different modes that you can select. Now, you have a, a little uh, hockey puck uh, device that comes with the screen, and you basically uh, can uh, quickly push a button, and these are configurable, to switch uh, into different profiles, okay? So you can go to a CAD CAM, animation mode, sRGB. You also have, for example, a darkroom mode, right? Now. <clears throat> the reason why that is uh, pretty cool is because that will allow you to um, you know, optimize the way that your screen is looking based on what you're doing at that moment, okay? And you can also use the on-screen display instead of the hockey puck if you like. Um, and uh, that is um, done with a touch screen mode on the top, uh, on the bottom right corner of the screen. You just uh, touch it with your finger, you can quickly switch there if you want, okay? All right, so um, looking at, for example, one of these modes, the animation mode, what that basically does is it plays with your contrast and you have levels. You can go from level zero to level 10. Uh, if you're working on uh, animation and you got really dark spots where it's hard to see detail, going into that mode will brighten that up, okay? Now, uh, the opposite of that would be, for example, the uh, dark room mode. Let's say you are uh, color grading some footage or color correcting a photograph and you don't want uh, you know, too much light noise coming in, so you're working in a dark space. You can switch to dark room mode very easily and that will help you to get uh, you know, a better uh, view of what you're working on, right? So uh, one more thing that is uh, pretty interesting is the key, uh, KVM switch. Well. That basically allows you to use one keyboard and one mouse and have two computers uh, hooked up to the same screen, right? And uh, another thing you can do actually is you can split screens. You can have two systems on one screen where you can share it, which is uh, pretty neat, okay? Now, um, uh, enough about the technical details. I'll put a listing below so you have everything neat and tidy and you can read back and so forth. But let's look at the workflow uh, when it comes to photography, film, 3D, and so forth, okay? Now, for example, uh, in Photoshop, uh, one of the obvious advantages having a 32-inch screen is they have a lot of space to work with, especially when you do landscape photography and you want to zoom in a lot to make sure that everything's in focus, if that is your intended photograph, then it's a really neat to have that space to work with but also to have that 10-bit color, which will allow you to go in and see nice and crisp uh, images, okay? And that um, resolution definitely helps. Now, what if you, uh, for example, are uh, in Lightroom? Well, uh, again, you know, you have that sRGB uh, color profile, you have the Adobe RGB, you can play around with those settings and you can actually compare them on screen. So if you want to see one versus the other, you can do that, okay? And again, that big, big workspace, really neat. So how about Premiere Pro? Let's say you're working on some footage. Well, again, obvious, a lot of space, uh, good control of color, but because of that space, you have the opportunity to have a bunch of menus and options open at the same time, and uh, it will speed up your workflow because you don't have to move stuff around all the time, right? So um, pretty much same deal with After Effects, um, you know, uh, space-wise, menu-wise, and so forth. And uh, yeah, pretty much the same. Now, one thing I obviously spend a lot of time doing is 3D. 
Now, um, in 3D, I tend to use a lot of different types of software. Um, Maya, 3D Code, a Substance Painter, Substance Designer, Mari, and so on and so on, okay? Now, uh, especially the animation mode uh, is really helpful, and I tend to use the darkroom mode as well when I'm in, uh, in 3D because that makes things more crisp. And when you're spending hours and hours working in, uh, in something like Maya, you kind of need to make sure that you don't strain your eyes too much, okay? And that said, there is an ergonomics mode built into the monitor that will basically alert you that you need to take a break, which is kind of neat, okay? So uh, that is basically my review so far. Um, my conclusion is that I would give this screen a two thumbs up. I'm really positive about it. Um, keep in mind, again, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, this is um, not a $20,000 screen. It's more in the range of $800. Why do I like it? Because it ticks all the boxes when it comes to my workflow, uh, photography, film, and 3D, and it fits within my budget. So I'm uh, really pleased about this, um, and I would like to thank uh, uh, BNQ for the opportunity here. And uh, if you need additional information, you'll find it below as mentioned, okay? Hopefully you liked this video. If you did, hit that like button. If you want to make sure you don't miss out on future videos, make sure you subscribe. And that said, see you guys next time and thank you for watching. Bye. Well, thanks for watching. And before you go, please hit that MH button to subscribe, okay? See you guys next time. Bye.